Now that I have the disc brake saw set up on the wheels, I want to uh, replace this. But before I just start tearing everything out, this proportioning valve is very important on disc brakes. The new proportioning valve uh, has different connections than this one. Uh, so you want to be prepared before you start tearing into it uh, what the size of each connection is and how many there are. There are five connections on this new proportioning valve as well as the brake light. Two of them go to the master cylinder. One goes to the rear brakes and then there's a left and right for the two fronts. As I'm looking at these, the two that go to the master cylinder are the correct size. The two that go to the front are the correct size, but it appears the one that goes to the back is a different size. Um, I'll have to verify that, but before I start taking everything off, I want to make sure I have all of these connections so that if I do have to cut one of these off, then I have to make sure I have a flaring tool that will work to reflare that as well as the correct fitting to slide onto this tube when I'm changing it over. So before I start taking any of this off, I'm going to make sure I have that connector because it didn't come in the kit. And I'll have to double check my flaring tool. So be prepared. There are the possibility that you'll be needing to change fittings. Uh, and some of the lines are different sizes too. Uh, I've got a fitting here that's probably the correct size, but my line is different. So you've got to check the size of the connection as well. Uh, here's one with a, a smaller diameter. So that could be the correct one. I do have a lot of connections in here. I most likely have what I need. So with that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and start tearing it all apart. And before I start actually cutting any of these fittings off, I'll make sure that I have the correct fitting and that I can actually slide it into place and bolt it on and it has the right tubing size before I start cutting anything. Make sure you have the right tool. I put a rag to catch the brake fluid. Brake fluid is acidic and it will eat the paint off of anything that it drips on. drip on anything. So I'll have to climb under the dash to change this connection and the new brake booster mounts to all four bolts rather than just the two and then these three lines are probably going to have to be rebent and I'm pretty sure one of them is going to have to be changed in size. In fact it looks like two of them will probably need to be changed. This bottom one here is one of the front brakes and this one is the other front brake. <laughs> This one had the correct fitting. This one doesn't, which is kind of weird. Uh, I was able to get it straightened out enough that I'm hoping I can get it all the way up and over. This one seems to have more length to it, but it was leaking really bad, so I had to hurry and plug it. 
So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and cut this end off because it's flared and then uh, I'll be able to put on the other fitting get a 90 degree bend in it and hurry and route it down here to the bottom where this one is leaking and then I'll have more length for this one to curl up and come up here on the top. Now when I have that cut off I can slide over this other fitting and make sure you get that fitting on first before you try to flare it. I'm going to have to gently straighten this tube out. It's got a bend right there. I don't want to crush the tube. You have to bleed the master cylinder before you put it on. So what I should have done is fitted all these parts first and then went back to bleed it. So everything keeps dribbling. I didn't get this one recorded. But I was in a really big hurry because I couldn't plug this up. It wouldn't stop flowing. It kept dripping. There's little attachments that you put on here, but they just weren't tight enough. It was making a mess. So I, I hurried and put it all together, and then these two were leaking, so I had to hurry and hook these up. But I'll show you what I did. I had to cut this one off and change the fitting because it was different than the original 69 Camaro fitting for this new... Uh, control valve. This one is the same. It's got the, the wrong connection on it to go to the back of this control valve. So I'm going to have to cut it off and add a flare and add a fitting and then make a new bend. And it, it looks like I have plenty of room here to create a new bend and put on the back. So I'll show you how I did that. First, what I want to do is try to take this bend out. It's difficult to do, <laughs> and sometimes you can even collapse the tube. But I was able to straighten that out without damaging it. I'll go ahead and cut it off right here. I could probably straighten this out but I don't think it's necessary. Now, I'm going to double check and make sure I got the right fitting. Okay, that's the right fitting for the control valve. Oh, that's the right tubing size. I need to clean that tubing off. It's got a little paint and rust residue on it. And before I flare this, <laughs> got to remember, put your fitting on first. I don't want to get any debris inside the tube. There we go. Just had to work it a little bit. There was just enough of a bend in that tubing that it didn't want to slide. I'll start by flaring it. On this little tube, I did a double flare on it, but the, the tube that I cut off for this but back tube just had a single flare. It wasn't double, so I'm just going to do the same. And what the, the double flare is, is you use these little tools, and when you slide it onto the pipe, you leave the pipe sticking out about an eighth of an inch, and it bubbles it out. It forces it into a bubble, and then 
you use the flaring tool to crush that bubble and it gives you a real thick seal bead. But this back one wasn't that way. Uh, the front ones take a lot of pressure. The back one doesn't get quite as much pressure. So they, from the manufacturer, the OEM, just did a single flare. They'll do the same. It's tough to do in the car. <clears throat> this tube had just enough damage from when it was bent that it split on me. That happens. So I'm going to have to cut off a little bit more and then try flaring it again. <clears throat> Sometimes you just have to keep going until it stops splitting. I probably went a little bit too far. I had a little bit too much sticking out because when it slid through, so I stressed it too much. Yeah, that's a really nice crimp. Now I need a, a nice 90 degree bend. Now you want to check your band and make sure it didn't collapse the tube. Looks good. Now I have to get it routed back and behind. These tubes that have the spring coil on them. Uh, it really helps to be able to hand manipulate the tube and bend it by hand. If you're just a bended tube without that, it has a tendency to crimp. You have to use your bending tool. But with that tube on there, you can't use the bending tool. You just have to gradually manipulate it. Wow, I think it's finally in. <laughs> That was tough, was really tough. Anyway, it's in place, <laughs> it's not pretty. So I'm gonna have to, <clears throat> I'm going to have to manipulate this back tube and manipulate these front ones a little bit as well. And just kind of tidy it up and make it look good. Make sure they're not really rubbing on anything. This back one is rubbing that little bit down on the side of the frame. And uh, these two are kind of rubbing together. In fact, all three of them are rubbing together a little bit. I don't want any vibration, even though they're covered with, with protecting uh, coils. So I'll, I'll clean that up and spend a little bit of time. Then I gotta clean everything up with my grubby hand prints. And then I gotta climb underneath the dash and hook up that bar to the pedal. Once I go over everything, make sure it's all buttoned up. Then I can bleed the lines and this job's finished. I got tired of recording, sorry. <laughs> this uh, was about three hours worth of work. There's the two bolts that mount the master to the booster. The booster has two brackets and there's a total of six bolts on the back there um, where it bolts to the firewall. And there's the uh, rod that goes from the pedal to the booster. And that rod is a two-piece rod and depending on your brake, arm, and the way the pedal is hooked up, there's two holes in that um, brake pedal arm and the two holes one is for the non power brakes which this had and the other hole is lower so you can see the way this is angled in that rod is angled down to the pedal so in order to get that length just right since this is an aftermarket kit 
uh, it came with two different rods. So it was a lot of trial and error to get that rod to that lower hole and get everything to be the right length and adjustment so that it worked out. And I had to cut the length of that. It's a threaded rod uh, in order to get it all to work. So like I say, it was a lot of trial and error. It was on again, off again, on again, off again. Kind of boring work, kind of like me going blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so anyway, if you get this kit, it does have really good instructions. Uh, I got this kit from Summit Racing. It's for a 14 inch wheel. Uh, and there is the wheel on now. And I went through and bled all the brakes. I had to bring, bleed front and rear. And now, you can hear it's got just a little bit of drag, just the way it should. Uh, while I was bleeding the brakes, I went ahead and just completely cleaned out all the brake system uh, when it comes to the brake fluid. So I bled it and bled it until it was all clean. So this uh, system is all ready to go. Um, the proportioning valve, you shouldn't ever have to adjust that. There is an adjustment there on the end. Uh, you can adjust how much pressure goes from the front of the car uh, to the rear of the car and balance everything out. So if you did a real hard braking, um, you can adjust that so that the rear wheels don't lock up. And that is also all in the instructions. Uh, speaking of braking in, you do have to brake in the disc brakes on the front and there is a brake-in uh, procedure that is in all the instructions. It's a matter of uh, going about 45 miles an hour and then coming to not a hard, hard stop, but a, a pretty good stop and heating the brakes up and then speeding up again and then bringing it back down to a, to, to a pretty hard stop again to really heat it up. I think you do it three times and then you just drive normal and, and brake normal and supposedly it's all broke in. So that's it for this episode of Ride Rescue. Uh, there was uh, a lot more to it than I thought when it came to this end of it. The actual disc brakes at the wheels was pretty easy, 15-20 minutes uh, for each wheel, but plan on about three hours for this part. So thanks again for watching. Appreciate you tuning in. If you like what I'm doing, please uh, give me a like. Leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks again. Bye for now.